What is cracking my hunters and huntresses? It's Run Creates and today we're going to be taking a look at how to get infinite blood echoes in Bloodborne in 2023. This is an updated version of last year's video. However, this time we're going to be covering the glitch last and the actual exploit first along with a step-by-step -step guide. Here we have Mr. Bean or at least my attempt to try and make Mr. Bean in Bloodborne. So if you're wondering why he was in the thumbnail, that is why. Not foreshadowing anything in the future. However, with that out of the way, let's first start with how to get infinite blood echoes and basically infinite amounts of consumables at the shop in Bloodborne in 2023. Okay, so like last time, we're going to be starting off in Esophica's clinic. Then we're going to go and pick up these motives. They're going to be very important for later. And you're going to make your way over to the Hunter's Dream to pick out your weapons. Like last time, it doesn't matter which weapon you pick, you can pick whichever one you want. I'm going to pick Saw Cleaver, along with the Hunter Pistol. Then you're going to pick up even more Maltovs, and then we're going to pick up our first shards right here. Be careful of the ambush. Then we're going to go into the next area, and we're going to backstab the fatty. If you can't get the backstab, that's okay. He's pretty easy to parry on his own. And once you do, you're going to be able to pick up the malt of cocktails and the torch, which is good for looking in low light. Then once you get to the bridge where the cleric demon is at, you're going to want to make your way over behind these statues to pick up one more bloodstone shard. After that, you're going to go the other way and enter into this room. At the bottom of steps, there's going to be this grandma and you're going to want to kill her. Once she's dead, pick up the pungents. You can then unlock the shortcut through the gate, but make sure you pick up the bloodstone shards before you do so. You're then going to progress like usual through the area, but we're going to go and make a stop over at Eileen. Before we do that, however, we're going to go to her side and we're going to knock down this corpse. I highly recommend you talk to her to grab the Bulls Hunter's Mark, as if you're a novice hunter, these can come in handy for, for when you have a lot of blood echoes on hand and you don't want to lose all of them. She'll also give you the Shake Off KP emote. Then you're going to want to fall back down from the place where you knocked that corpse off of, and you're going to want to go away from the actual tunnel opening. That way you can get the jump on the rat. Then you're going to want to pick up the Bloodstone Shards. Down the pathway, there's going to be a ladder to your right. You're going to want to climb all the way up this ladder, and then once you get to the top, there's going to be another fatty. This one is very easy to just walk behind and backstab. You shouldn't have much of a problem taking him out. Then once he's defeated, once you climb up the ladder, which he can follow you up, which is really scary, you're going to open up the gate, and on the other side, you're going to want to talk to this squirrel. And on the other side, you're going to want to talk to a little girl. She's going to give you the music box, which is going to come in handy for later. You are then going to want to progress as usual, and once you get to the bridge with the dudes that shoot the giant fireball across it, you're going to want to run across that bridge. And then you're going to be able to unlock that elevator shortcut, which will come in handy. Then you're going to want to go back to the dream and upgrade your salt cleaver to plus one. I get to plus two because I was fortunate enough to have some more drop from enemies. I hope that you've accumulated a few echoes because now's a good time to invest. Next up is the Cleric Beast. All you have to do is just abuse the sexy R1, L1, L1 combo and watch this sucker bleed. It should take you too long before the beast is defeated. Then you're going to want to make your way over to Father Gaskergeen. What you want to do is use the music box first. I believe it takes three plays of the music box to send him into second phase when he's in phase one. Or beast form. Once he's in beast form, you can try to use an oil pot and then strategically throw your molds of cocktails as you don't want them to miss. He is very aggressive, however, if you can get the spacing and timing right, you should be able to parry and repost him quite easily. Gaskergeen will definitely be one of the harder bosses you'll face in this video, but even if you're new, you should be able to make it through. I have faith in you. Once Gaskergeen is defeated, you're going to want to make your way over and pick up the Red Jewel Brooch. 
Afterwards, you're going to make your way back to the Hunter's Dream, and there you're going to want to buy Gaskergeen's whole attire, and then you're going to want to strip naked and sell all of your attire. Trust me, you're not going to need it. Also, with the blood echoes you have from the Gaskergeen battle, I highly recommend buying Maltive cocktails and pungent blood cocktails before you go. But then we're going to make our way up to the Cathedral Ward. Then you're going to want to take the left route, which will take you to the Hunter set. Just make sure you get out of the way before the Amygdala catches you. Then, further up the path, you can pick up some more Bloodstone Shards. Then you're going to want to run past the Giant and make your way down to pick up a few more Bloodstone Shards. There should be some next to Crows, and then the others should be next to the Giant with the Ball and Chain. If you keep going all the way down, you and then at the very end in the chest is a blood gem. We're then going to make our way over to old Yarnum. You're going to press the lever and then we're going to go down. There's also more tempering stones here. However, when you get all the way towards the door entrance, in that room, there's actually some more pungent blood cocktails that are behind a bunch of vases. So make sure you pick them up as well. You're going to want to run all the way over to the point with the cross, and then you're going to drop down. There's a little place where you can wait while the bullets go by with the Gatling gun. Then you're going to want to jump down, and then run all the way through the area. There's a bloodstone shard over in this place as well. And then if you keep going down, you can grab yourself some ritual blood. After that, you're going to want to make your way up the ladder, and then you're going to want to unlock this shortcut. Now we're going to want to go back to the Hunter's Dream and upgrade your weapon to plus 3. Then you're also going to want to go to Blood Gem Fortification and then equip one of your Tempering Stones and use your Red Jeweled Brooch. Then you're going to want to apply that gem to your Saw Cleaver as well. You can pick up the beast blood pellets right here. And right before the boss fight on the staircase down, there's a gremlin. Make sure you kill it. Now for Bloodstar Beast. I highly recommend for Bloodstar Beast that you get this battle done as fast as possible. What you want to do is throw your pungent blood cocktails at the wall and wait until the Bloodstar Beast goes over to attack it. When it's attacking the wall, it's the best time to throw your multives as they won't miss, since every multive you throw is going to count. Once you run out of multive cocktails, you're going to want to make sure that you use your beast blood pellet, and then throw your pungent blood cocktail at the wall, and abuse the R1, L1, L1, L1 attack. The beast food pellet increases your attack power with successive attacks, so R1, L1, L1, L1 combos will work very well. Antidotes are very helpful to have in this battle, and you'll probably end up having to use one or two, so make sure you do not forget them. And congratulations, you beat a really difficult boss. You will then be awarded the Thumeru Chalice, and you're going to want to make your way back to the Hunter's Dream. Now, you're going to want to go to one of the empty tombstones on the left of the Hunter's Dream, and you're going to want to search for the Glyph. Then you're going to want to put the code that's up on the screen right now and type it exactly how it is into the game. This is the Come Dungeon. Upon entering, the first thing you're going to notice is that you have very little HP. This is okay though as we're not going to be doing any fighting in here. Light the lamp and just walk into this room. You guys are going to notice that an enemy is already being killed. Once it dies... Wait for it. There it is. Quite a handsome amount of blood echoes. And they're all yours without any effort at all. Now you're going to want to go back to the Hunter's Dream and go over to the fountain and buy a nice fat stack of bold Hunter's Marks. Go back to the Chalice Dungeon 
and then you're going to want to do exactly what you did again. But this time you can do it with less hassle as you don't have to keep going back and forth from the Chalice Dungeon to the Dream. You can just reset the whole Chalice Dungeon by using the Bold Hunter's Mark. And there you guys go. That is by far the best way to get infinite Blood Echoes in Bloodborne. You can basically do this infinitely and it's so much better than the glitch method. However, because this is how to get infinite amounts of blood echoes, we have to of course show off the glitch. So now let's get into the glitch. The glitch is actually pretty simplistic. It's not that difficult to do and as soon as you have your hands on some cold blood dew, although Kin's cold blood is preferred over it, since you can get a lot more blood echoes from Kin's cold blood than regular, but I have do here because you guys can see I have over a million blood echoes and I'm only blood level 10. So what we're gonna do here is you're gonna need to have your cold skin blood or your cold blood dew that you're gonna do. You need one of these items. So if you have any extras, just throw them in your storage along with your blood echoes and your quicksilvers. Can't have them out either. You're gonna wanna have either the hunter's mark or the bold hunter's mask. And you're gonna wanna have one of those in your right d-pad slot or right touchpad slot on your playstation 5 controller right here and then you're going to want to add your hunter's mark or your bold hunter's mark to that slot we're gonna need that for later but for right now we need to equip our cold blood dew into our first slot and then we're gonna make our way over to this here ledge we want to get up against as much as possible and then we want to walk off it and we're going to use our cold blood and we want to make sure that we don't actually use it we just want to make sure we hold it all the way up like this with our hand and then it cancels out the animation before we get a chance to use it afterwards we're going to go back to our storage box and we're going to put that cold blood back in now that we've done that we need to get up against the corner here like i'm showing on the screen and we're going to be running constantly into this corner what we our input here is triangle right d-pad or touchpad i don't know why i keep saying d-pad and then you're going to want to press X and you want to press X as soon as the hand comes back from doing the animation like we don't have anything in our inventory. If you do it correctly, you'll get this. And if you keep doing the same exact thing over and over again consistently, you're going to be able to rack these up mildly quickly to say the least. It's, it's nowhere as fast as the first method, but it is a glitch and it does still work. So it is there, although. To be completely honest, it is way easier to just use Common Dungeon. I don't even think there's any debate in that. But there you go. That is the two methods on how to get infinite blood echoes in Bloodborne in 2023. Hope you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun running through Yarnum again to make this video for you guys. It's always fun to make this. So if you enjoyed or got value from today's content, leave a like on the video. Always appreciated. Also, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already for more content just like this. Have a Dark Souls Glitches playlist in the description below where you guys can go and check out the other glitches for Infinite Souls in the other Soulsborne games. But other than that, I do have a membership. If you want, you can go and support me for $1.25 a month. And if you need help with other glitches, go ahead and check out my Discord server. Link is in the description below. Other than that, I'd like to thank all of you guys for watching this far. And go out and join the hunt tonight. Peace.